Hello everyone. Hi, this is Mitch Bailey with Bailey's Eating and Air and Air Heroes. I want to talk to you guys about SEER. SEER rating. What is SEER? And what is EAR? Uh, uh, the two sound very similar, SEER and EAR, but they are actually quite different. So let's talk about SEER first. So what does SEER stand for? SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency ratio. I'm just going to abbreviate that. And then what does EER stand for? So EER stands for energy uh, efficiency ratio. What's the difference? Because air conditioners are rated by SEER and EAR. And uh, the rating organization that you, you we use for this is called AHRI. It's the Air Conditioning Refrigeration Institute. And they rate all equipment that's manufactured and sold in the U.S. Uh, they give it rating, a SEER rating, and an EAR rating. Um, and they also give it an AHRI number. That number tells us exactly uh, what rating it has. Uh, we can look it up and we can see that the equipment's matched and that we're getting the actual rating. If it doesn't have an AHRI number, that AHRI number uh, means that it's, it's rated and... Uh, uh, if it doesn't have one, then it's not rated. So, uh, can you set an unrated piece of equipment? Well, typically it's not rated, not rated because you have, you combine two different types of equipment. You might have a, a brand A or brand B, and you put them together and you don't have a rating for that. Does that mean it's not as efficient as it's supposed to be? Not necessarily. So, let's talk about SEER first. SEER rating is uh, uh, measured at a different temperature than they do EER. SEER rating is measured at 85 degrees Fahrenheit and EER is measured at 95 degrees Fahrenheit and you might say well um, I live in California and if it's 85 degrees I'm not going to run my air conditioner uh, the AC is actually um, going to be off and I'll just open a window because that's very comfortable but if you lived in say Florida or uh, in a state that's very humid you would run your air conditioner when it's 85 because you need to take the humidity level out because 85 degree temperature with like 95% humidity is going to feel like 95 degrees. It's going to be very warm to you. So you'll need to run the air conditioner taking the humidity out. Uh, so SEER is kind of based on the whole country. What they do is that they take the whole country and they say, okay, it's it's this is a number we can use across the country because they don't just base it on the EER. Now, the temperature difference, the 95 for the EER, that's more uh, uh, for our area here in, in California, in the Central Valley, we need uh, a, a higher EAR because we, we use that rating. That's actually better for us than 95 degrees. So what's the other difference? Um, uh, SER takes into account the stopping and the starting of the equipment. And it's based, it gives you a seasonal uh, number that you can actually use to do a calculation to see what it would cost you to run that piece of equipment over a typical season in your area. Uh, you can actually do the math. We'll do that in a second. Uh, energy efficiency ratio, though, at the 95 degrees, is uh, just takes into account that the equipment, once it gets running, is the energy that it consumes at its steady state. In other words, at this particular temperature, it's consuming this many watts to run and producing so many BTUs. Um, seasonal energy efficiency ratio, SEER, is done in a computer and it's, we can't measure that in the field. EER, though, however, I can measure that in the field. I can measure energy efficiency ratio by taking the BTUs, and if I calculate the BTUs that the unit producing per hour, and I divide it by the watts that it uses to do that, I will come up with my EER. And that's that makes it very easy to um, come up with that number. The, the problem being though that it's going to be based on whatever temperature I take at that time. If it's cooler than 95, I'm going to have a higher EER than it was rated with. If it's uh, warmer than 95 degrees, it's going to be a lower EER. But I can measure it and I can actually show the customer. Especially if we're close to the 95, we can usually typically see that it's actually producing the EER that it was designed to do. SER we can't do that with. So that being said, um, let's go about where how SEER actually kind of became the norm for the country. So the federal government in 1992, 
they established the minimum sear at 10. So any unit that was made in, in the United States that had to have a sear rating of 10 or better could not be made any less efficient. And then in 2006, they upped those standards again so that it was 13 sear. And 13 sear is, was the basis in 2006. Again, not too long ago, in 2015, they upped it one more time to 14 sear. And every time they up it, the price of the equipment does get a little cheaper because they tend to make more of that unit. Everybody has to make it. So the price comes down because it's more supply than, than demand. And so the price tends to come down on this equipment. And Sears also direct relationship. So if I had a, let's say a eight Sear unit and I change it out to a 16 Sear unit, it's twice as efficient so it would actually cost half as much to run as the uh, eight sear piece of equipment. So uh, sear's a pretty good number that we can actually do a calculation and can figure out what it actually costs. One thing you have to be aware of though is that with age the equipment degrades um, and as it degrades the sear rating actually goes down. So let's just take this uh, uh, and, I'll, and I'll just give you some numbers for the uh, that's been published. This is through Texas and uh, they did a lot of studies on it and this is what they found. They found, found that if it's pre-1976 uh, that it's going to be uh, five sear right at. Okay and if it was made between uh, 1977 and 86 that same piece of equipment would be about a six sear. So if you look at your model number and serial number and you can just see what when it was built, then you can extrapolate uh, what kind of sear it was. If it was built uh, between 87 and 91, you're looking at a sear rating of seven right at, seven sear. And if it was built between 91 and 99, that's that, it's gonna be that eight sear that we talked about a second ago. So um, that particular, uh, particular units built in 92, would be right at eight sear if you were to try and do this calculation here that we're going to do in a minute. If it was built between 2005 and 09, uh, I'm sorry, 2000, 2005, it's a nine sear rating. So uh, if it was built between 06 and 08, you're looking at an 11 sear. And this is typical. And then uh, if it was between 09 and uh, 14, then it should be uh, 12 sear. Having these, the, knowing these numbers when you do a calculation, so it's something that you might want to write down, because I'm going to show you here right now how to do a calculation to actually figure out what your costs are to run that unit over a typical average season. And it's, it's pretty simple. We just, uh, uh, I'll just do the math for you right now. I'll show you how we do the calculation. So our calculation is based upon uh, the hour, or the BTUs the unit produces. So we're going to take the BTUs that the unit produces, BTUs uh, per hour that the unit produces times the cooling hours in your, in your area. So the cooling hours. And then we're going to take and divide that by the sear rating. So we're going to divide it by the sear and then we're going to multiply that times your kilowatt rate per hour. So what your kilowatt rate per hour is and that's in dollar or cents or dollars and then we're going to uh, divide that by 1000. Okay. And that's going to give us our annual um, seasonal average. Uh, cost of running. So let's do the numbers. Let's just take a three ton unit. So a three ton unit is 36,000 BTUs. That's how much BTUs it should be producing. So we have 36,000 times cooling hours. Now in Modesto area, we have cooling hours of 1,159. So that's how many hours the unit should run on a typical season. 
and then we're going to divide it by a SEER rating. So let's take the old SEER rating. Let's say this was a 1995 unit, and we know that the 95 unit, it's going to be uh, right at uh, between uh, uh, 91 and 99. It's going to be at 8 SEER. So let's just take and we'll use 8 SEER as our number. And so uh, let's put plug in 8 for our SEER rating. And then we're going to times it times our kilowatt rate. Now in our area, and it's going to vary depending on where you live and what you, you, you use and what your utilities charge. In this area, the utilities charge us uh, 25 cents a kilowatt on average. So it's at 25 cents a kilowatt. And then we're going to divide this by 1,000 because we got to convert it into uh, watts. And that's why they do the 1,000 because this is in kilowatts. And then that gives us our number. So if we do the math on this, that actually comes out to that it costs approximately $1,303.88 a season to run. So that would be typical. It'd be over four months or so, four to five months of the cooling season that you should run the system. This is on average. It'll vary on how you use it. Other factors are how well your house is insulated and uh, how hot or cold it is outside. So, you know, if it's a nice, hot, hot summer, you actually could probably exceed that. If it's a cooler summer, it's, it's going to be less. So let's do the same calculation. Uh, but this time we're going to take and we're going to, we're going to keep the same size equipment. We're going to have the same cooling hours because we're just, all we're doing is changing up the piece of equipment, putting more efficient in. But I'm going to go with 16 sear. And then we got the same kilowatt rate. That hasn't changed. We're going to divide it by the thousand. And now this equals uh, $651.94. That is half of the 1303.88. Remember how I said that this is the 8 sear. Whenever you double it, or if you go from an 8 to a 16, you're actually consuming half the energy. So it's kind of costing half as much to run that piece of equipment. If you get to take it one step further and you subtract the, the, the amount from what you were doing, how much are you actually saving? Well, you're saving $651.94 every season by just changing this piece of equipment out to a 16 sear. Um, the, the benefit of that is over 20 years, so let's say we take 20 years and we multiply it times the 651.94, uh, now we're saving $13,000 uh, $13, and uh, uh, and 38, 13,038. That's quite a bit of savings uh, for just changing your equipment out. Not only that, if you factor in that uh, electric rates go up over time, this is 25 right now, but what's it gonna be six years from now? It could be 26, 27. So this, this could actually be much more savings. It could be you know as high as 14,000 just by the, natural increase of the utility rates over time. Then also, if you take into account that with this eight sear piece of equipment, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it. So I'm going to have to spend probably anywhere from 2000 to $4,000 trying to keep it running. That's, that's got to be added into this. So you add this back in this. Now suddenly we're at seven, you know, if we put 4,000 on that. Now we're at $17,000 in savings, which is phenomenal. I, you know, that's doesn't make sense to keep this old piece of equipment, this 1992 unit, get rid of it, or 1995 unit, get rid of it, throw it away, get this new 16 sear system, and you're going to save a ton of money on your energy bills. Uh, all right, I hope this helped you out and helped you understand the difference between sear and ear. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'd be happy to get back to you. Thank you very much.